The Knicks are alive. The Nets are gone. Rangers and Islanders, even their series at two apiece. Playoff fever in New York. Catch it with the three wise men. Next. And good morning again. It's the Three Wise Men live from Channel 34 here in beautiful Montclair, New Jersey. Not so beautiful this morning, but another wake-up version on this Thursday. Coffee. May 9th. <laughs> coffee in hand. The Knicks are even at one all after a win against the Pacers. The Nets are done, and so is P.J. Carlissimo. And uh, the Rangers and, dare we say, the New York Islanders are back in the playoff mix, Al Renato, a.k.a. Al from White Plains, with the hometown hero to my left, Mike Goldstein, uh, Mike from Montclair, and, of course, the uh, always quiet and demure Dennis from Yonkers, uh, Denny D'Addario. Morning, Michael. How are you? Can't What's up, up guys? I project. I project. Yeah, you do project. Project is an hey, understatement. Hey, let's hope uh, next time Kenyon Martin and uh, Raymond Felton mug oh, somebody God, at half court. There's a foul call. Then I think that here they're going back go. to Indianapolis. You want him arrested? Would you like him arrested and thrown in jail? I mean, it was ridiculous. Okay. I mean, come you on. talk about home cooking. No, Basically, no, no, no. a mugging took place at half court, which set up the tone for Mike, the rest. Mike, they beat him by 25 points for crying. I know, but that was the beginning of the end. I don't know if it set up a 30-2 to two run. Yeah. Was it 30-2? I, I thought it was I thought it was, wasn't it 26 I, I, nothing I believe, at one point? I believe it was 30-2. to two, I don't think that had much to do with it. But I know you want him arrested, thrown in jail. And... <laughs> well, <laughs> not just for that, but for other atrocities <laughs> okay, committed. <great. laughs> That's great. Resident, think, resident, I'm resident. sure there's been a few. Well, we got some good stuff going on in New York, though. I mean, um, I, I'm more, I'm actually more focused on the hockey because the island, you got a 1-8 eight, eight series with the Pens and Islanders, and as you switch jerseys, the Islanders look to be every bit as good as the Pens. It looks to be like there's no defense in either series between the Rangers, Caps, Islanders, Pens, and the only defensive team in the East seems to be Ottawa, and so they, I'm picking them to go to the finals. And interesting that you're taking Flurry out of goal and replacing him with a guy who's – you know, who's had some success against the Islanders in the past. Yeah. I think he's like 17 and 9 right. against them in his career. But it's still, is it a desperation move? I, uh, you know, you said no defense. I, I don't know if it's no defense or, or no goalkeeping because Flurry, Flurry has been a right. sieve. Right. Okay. And if, if you listen to the, the powers that be, and the experts, they have all called uh, for him to be pulled out of the nets for a game five, which is obviously a controversial move doing it in such a, you know, a pivotal game. But if you listen to anybody, uh, whether it's on, uh, you know, the NHL uh, broadcasts on, on, NB on the NBC uh, package of networks or, you know, if it's ESPN, whatever the case may be, um, they're all calling for Flurry to be replaced. And I, I think, you know, last night was another shot, was another shoddy game, you know, in, in the Rangers series. I, I thought King Henry was mediocre at best. Until but, the end. But, but, but the cap goalie was worse. Yeah, yeah. until the yeah. end. I got to say, uh, you know, we both think Lundqvist the most overrated athlete in New York. But he made three or four saves at the end of that game that were spectacular and won the game for the Rangers. But he's supposed to stand on his head. Well, I, mean, I know, but he doesn't do it for that's one of the reasons. That, the that, that, that's one of the reasons they're supposed to be good. Right. And, and in hockey, if you get a, you know, 1-8, uh, where the 8 seed is challenging the 1, is not crazy in hockey because if you get a hot goal, no, it can happen. That's right. Unlike in the NBA, that's not where the it case, virtually though. never happens. That's not the case in the Penn's Island series. This is about the team in, in, in general. Well, the, well it's, it's led actually, by this kid out yeah, But, 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 but it's, all, it's, all, it's also a goalie. Okay? Well, the Bokoff's not exactly No, 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 no but either. Fleury has been pitiful. You have a goalie that's playing so poorly, it's, he is a let, guy it's who, let the other team in. He did win in. a Stanley Cup for the Penguins a few years ago. I, yeah. but, but, there's no disputing that, but he has been hideous. So he has done at least Point for is, game Islanders five, can actually win and, that series. and and I mean, and maybe done for the playoffs. I, I don't think so. Any so win the so Pen. if Flurry sits and the Pens win the next two games and they move on, just it's a what if? Do they go back to Flurry to start the next series, or do they ride the hot hand? I, I That's think, an interesting I, coaching decision. I, I, I think it's going to depend upon how well he plays. Right. You know, if they go out and win game six five. Right. Seven four. Right. But if he plays a couple good games, you know the deal. You, you ride. The, they always talk about a hot goalie. You ride the so hot hand. So if, if he plays well and they're successful, then I, I think absolutely you well, ride. Was a carryover from to. that flyer disaster from last year in the first round for the Pens too, where the games were like, I mean, a five goal lead wasn't wasn't safe. So now the Rangers down two zero, mm -hmm. come back, hold court, right. hold serve, uh, win two very tight games, back and forth games. 
and, and go back to Washington. What's your thoughts there? You know, another pivotal game five coming up there. Well, this is what I, th I, I, I got to think the regular season has some meaning. So I still think uh, the Cavs. Wait a minute, you hold no, on. No, no, no. I think there's some reason why the Rangers snuck in as the sixth seed and ba and barely made the playoffs. Well, then you got to reword that because you think the NBA regular season has no meaning and the no, NHL no, 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 season. No, no, no. That's that, that's well. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But that's not what I mean about the no, NBA regular that season. Means, that means Dennis has to actually let you speak. Well, okay. Finish your sentence. There, there might be a slight pause in there where I can fit a few words. Go in. ahead. But, but I think there's a reason why the Caps were the number three seed and the Rangers were the sixth seed. So I still think the Caps are a better team. So I expect them to hold serve Trunk now back. season. Trunk, but it was still a 50-game season. Hmm. So I still I, I think the Caps still have the edge going back to Washington. Yeah, they look like the better team. Of course, now the Rangers seem to have a problem. And I'm believe me, I'm no hockey aficionado, but the Rangers seem Wait to have a Wait a second. The Rangers. Is there a sport you're not aficionado? There's something, there's something not you're not expert at? Absolutely. The, you can't but skate back. From what I hear on the NHL network, the Rangers have a problem matching up with their lines, their last change in Washington. If they can deal with that, I you've guess. Al you've already said more than I expected you to say. The la you're, you're actually concentrating on the, on the number three line? No, I'm not. I'm just saying he's, they have he's, trouble he's, he's matching he's up. He's repeating primarily what he matching Can you tell up me who's on the third primarily, line? The primarily matching up with Ovechkin and, and his group. He's repeating what he heard. I'm going to tell you why I think the Rangers are going to win. Uh, in response to what you said, the Caps were the number three seed because they beat up on a pitiful division. If you check their numbers, they are something like, and I don't have, it's something like 16 and three against the Floridas of the world. All right? And against you know, the better teams in the East, they were mediocre at best. So I think the Rangers are going to win game five. I think the Rangers are the better team. And I think they're going to come home and win it in six. Because I think if you, if you line the two, ups up, two teams up player for player, and depth. I think the Rangers are a better team. Tell you what, you're setting it up. You're setting New York up for a, uh, a revisit to 1994. If the Knicks can get by the Pacers and you got the Rangers moving on, you've got shades of 1994. Well, for, for all, all we need is another O.J. Simpson uh, episode. For Dolan's sake, let's hope not. Well, <laughs> we'll get to Dolan. Oh, you don't think Dolan would would trade would, would take that right now? Of course now? he would. I hope he. he says he I hope it not. doesn't work he his way. Oh, oh, okay. His way. Because if you ask Jim Dolan right now, you oh, know, God. would you take a Stanley Cup and the Knicks losing in the finals? Where do I sign? Oh, I, I, absolutely. Uh, the NBA playoffs, as, as we shift gears there, and we'll get to it after the break. Uh, you know, specifically the Knicks. But how about the NBA playoffs? Your favorite league after a very slow start. I mean, let's call a spade a spade where series were 2-0 and right. blowouts and ugly. Have really, despite the fact of uh, no Kobe Bryant, no Derrick Rose so far, the terrible injury to Westbrook, which has clearly hurt the thunder, right, uh, have really turned it up a notch and, and are going full gear with the matchups, the upsets, the overtimes, the excitement. So I, I think the rest of round two is going to be tremendous theater. And when we come back uh, in depth, we're going to get into Nick's Pacers. We have a special guest, the one and only Frank Isola, Nick Beat Writer from the Daily News, is going to join us. Back with more of the Three Wise Men on this Thursday morning, rainy in Montclair. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Three wise men are back on this rainy Thursday morning in Montclair. NBA takes front and center Renato D'Addario Goldstein with a special guest from the Daily News, Nick Beat writer, Mr. NBA himself, Frank Isola. Hmm. Frank, welcome aboard. How are you this morning? Thanks for having me. I just hope I get the same treatment that uh, Mike Francesa got. <laughs> I just want softballs lobbed at me, one after another. Uh, well, That's why I came here this early. White hot grill. Come on. I, I put you on a pedestal, and then, then you, you come after me. Right <laughs> now, here's the, the difference. We were on his home court. You're that's, on our home court point. now. It's, There's it's a an difference. away game for you me. Know, and he could have simply said, thanks, guys. It's nice snowing you. Yeah, and we could have <laughs> been sitting here with thumbs up somewhere. You know. yeah. we'll, we'll still be lobbing him in for you. Okay, thanks. Okay, but, but right out of the box, you know, your, your initial reaction to the first two games of, uh, of your Knicks Pacers. I thought the Pacers had an advantage on the quick turnaround, having both teams playing on the road Friday. Pacers were the younger team. I don't think the Knicks were really ready to play Indiana yet. Now the series really sets up well for the Knicks because I, I think game three is in about five weeks. You know, and then, <laughs> and then after that, there's another big um, you know, stretch of off days. I think it's like two or three. So those, you know, the breaks will certainly help. 
I think the Knicks are the better team. I think they're deeper. The advantage the Pacers have, they're long, they're athletic. Those are the teams that give the Knicks trouble. They can't you, score. No, that's, and that they was can't a, shoot. And that was the same problem with Boston. Boston couldn't score either. That's they're why scored. the shocking thing about the Boston series wasn't that they really won game five. It's that they won on that run at the end of game uh, game six to actually get close to make it a you know to almost put a little scare into the Knicks because Boston can score and I think Indiana Indiana's guards are better than Boston's guards but they're still not good enough. George Hill's really underrated. I mean he learned his stuff when you learn your stuff in San Antonio and then you move elsewhere. He's really underrated. But you're around the Knicks and all we heard all I seemed to hear from the Knicks was can't wait to play the Heat. Do you get the sense they will look and they're still looking past these teams? I, and looking to looking I think, to the Heat, think I think they're, they're looking the past the Heat. I think that they think the Heat is just going to be like a bit of a speed bump. And to you know, to the Knicks' credit, I think they have a lot of confidence, but I think sometimes they need to tone it down a little bit because once they start getting ahead of themselves, and it played out in the Boston series with you know Kenyon Martin, because of course you want to listen to career advice from Kenyon Martin when he told the team to wear black for the game against Boston. It was silly. It Two was, weeks you know, after the Boston Marathon. I mean, it, that, yeah, absolutely. But it's also, if the Golden State Warriors had done that to a closeout game, you would excuse it as, well, you know what, they're a bunch of young kids. They're not that bright. They've never been through it. Here's the oldest team in the league. Why would they do that? Maybe that speaks to the character. Of the and I think, I think that's an issue. I think that's the thing about trying to get this team to be focused. Now, how, how good a job do you think Woodson has done, number one? And number two, do you think he's a big-time coach? I think he's done a great job. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Mike would second that because Mike always talks about what a great job he's doing. Who's but Mike he's Woodson? I'm no, no. kidding. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. I, as Bill Maher said, I kid. I kid. No, he's, uh, I think he's done a very good job. I think what he's done with J.R. Smith has been terrific. But let's also remember, J.R. Smith could be a free agent. So while it sometimes can look that he's you know, instilled some discipline in J.R. Smith's life, it's also about J.R. Smith going to be a free agent. And money talks. He I has become, a, but this year he's played the best defense he's ever played. I've never seen, I've never seen him about. defend like that. No, and I think Mike Woodson has a lot to do with that. And if you look at Mike Woodson, he comes from the Larry Brown school. First of all, he played for Bobby Knight. We know that. Mm -hmm. But really, Larry Brown is his coaching muse, so to speak. He worked for him in Philly and in Detroit. It, and that's what I always find so interesting about the Knicks. You know, the owner of the Knicks, Jim Dolan, hates Larry Brown. But on his bench is a Larry Brown disciple. Before, just one thing, one quick thing on the Pacers. Everybody talks about, you know, you got to have a go-to guy. Still, I'm not convinced that there is a go-to guy on the Pacers. You know, and I think, and I think that's why I, I can't see them winning three more series and winning a championship. Who are you going to go to? Now, it hasn't played out yet in these games because the Knicks have had a lead in the last game. I mean, uh, Indiana had a lead in game one. The Knicks blew them out in game two. But late in the game, if you need a basket, what are they going to do? I would think they'd try to get the ball to Paul George, maybe run the offense through David West. And that's the huge advantage that the Knicks have. People, you can criticize Carmelo Anthony all you want, but Carmelo gives the Knicks something that most of the teams in the league don't have, a guy that you can get the ball to, and he demands double teams, and he can score. Yeah. You know, I don't think he's on – I think Kevin Durant is a better scorer, but – Right behind him is Carmelo Anthony. Do you agree that the Knicks have to go bigger against this Pacers team? No, nah, because then you're playing, you're not playing Carmelo Anthony. Because that Anthony was the talk after at small game one by a lot. I mean, a power forward. And the advantage the Knicks have had all year is Carmelo Anthony, a power forward. Right. Because how do you match up against him? You don't. What and, about, and, what about and, the other end of the floor? But, but that's the thing. West. The Pacers, when, when Carmelo's guarding David West, I thought they did a really good job of West attack. Even if West is going to make shots, you could tell he's running into Carmelo. And maybe you didn't see, but Carmelo's uh, shoulder is bothering him because every time he gets hit, he has to go through the whole histrionics right. of grabbing his shoulder to remind everybody how hurt he is, which is a new thing with that's the NBA. That's 27 for 23 what, what, and not But well, that's also 20. a new thing with the NBA. It used to be 20 years ago, 10 years ago, they didn't talk about their injuries. Now it's like a – I mean, Derek Rose made a commercial about his injury. That's where you are in the NBA now. That being said – Robert Griffin the third, also. Though. Absolutely. It's all about these injuries with these players. But Carmelo, I think, has had an outstanding year. I think defensively he's done much better than he has in the past. He's tried to rebound. He's not, he is what he is. I, I always say about Carmelo, he's not LeBron. Everyone thinks of him like in the same context of LeBron James. Mm. LeBron James is a freak. Mm. He's an unbelievable athlete. He plays both ends of the court. But Carmelo Anthony has a unique skill too. He can score almost at will. And at the end of the day, it sounds like what you're saying is because the Pacers can't score and the Knicks do have a yeah. guy to go score. That's and I know that Mike watches series. the NBA religiously. He gets I, the uh, NBA – League NBA, pass. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, no, I have watched every Nick game. I've watched yeah. at least parts of every Nick game. And he used to work at the Garden. That's right. I used to work in 1973. Uh, I, used to shoot, I used to shoot with uh, Henry Bibby. Bibby basketball. Bibby basketball. And you think what were you selling? And you think beer? No, I was too young. Oh, okay. No. And you think oh, I drop no. names. Do you, uh, <laughs> Frank, so uh, let's go to the other recent series. What did you make of the Bulls? 
first series, seven games against the Nets, depleted, basically depleted. No Heinrich, yeah. no Dang. Beat the Heat in Miami, who they, it's like nine, I think they're eight and nine against the last 70 yeah. games, something like that. What do you make of that series? Is this was that the bellwether last night with the? Yeah, well, I, as as it relates to Brooklyn, to me that was a bad sign for the Nets because your starting back court is in their prime. Did you, you know, agree you, with you, PJ, my former sweet mate, by the way, for dropping names? I think they were going to lose that. I, I thought the, I thought if he didn't get out of the first round, he was going to get hard, which was you know you, I, I think it's unfair, but th- you the knew thirty five and nineteen wasn't going to get him through. Uh, right. It's amazing, right? Why can't in big spots? Because you know he's he's a wonderful offensive player. Is it just Joe Johnson's never going to make a big shot in the postseason? Yeah. He, I mean, in, in that game seven, there were so many opportunities when that game got close for him to make. And he had great shots. He had wide open threes, the shots that you pay him to bring him in to make. He made one of them. Yeah, and I would say this about Joe Johnson. I think he was hurt, and that's another thing. They kept talking about it the whole time, but he's got to do better than that. Even if you have that foot injury because – uh, Joachim Noah of the Bull, the Bulls Center had the same injury, and he was being productive. Now, I get it. He, he gives you production in different kind of ways, but Joe Johnson is making a lot of money to make shots, and you have to make open shots at some point. And in a game seven like that, that's when you see, like, who really has the mental toughness to kind of come through. And to me, Tom Thibodeau, who is an excellent coach, his team was a little tougher mentally than the, the more experienced uh, Brooklyn Nets. See, I thought Atlanta gave themselves a big chance to, to advance this season because they reduced their missed big shots by one when Joe Johnson left. But Josh Smith and Joe Johnson haven't made a big shot in a playoff game yet. I yeah. mean, it's unbelievable. Right. The, the Atlanta Hawks are terrible. Yeah. They're, they're one of those teams that, to me, wasn't but good But Johnson never made a big shot down there, no. to Al's point, and he, no. doesn't make him, he didn't make them with the Nets for the most part. No. I mean, he had a couple of regular season shots, basically, yeah. but not in a big spot. We'll get to Rose after the break. How good a coach is Thibodeau? Oh, he's, well... I, I'm friendly with Tom, so I'm going to be biased. But to me, nobody works harder during the lockout. If, I, if you call him up in August, there's no basketball. He's in his office watching film. Nobody works harder. He's got no wife, no girlfriend. His job is basketball. It's like you guys with this show. It's all about your work. He's, really, he's not married and he has no girlfriend? No. No, he's a, he's, a, he's a man. And that's a good thing? He's a basketball man. For the Bulls, it is. Yeah, I guess. Just, just in time for the break, when we come back. Uh, We'll talk more about Bulls Heat and all things NBA. We'll shift west a little bit uh, in the third segment of the show with Frank Isola, the Daily News. We are the Three Wise Men back after this. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Three wise men are back. It's all NBA this morning with uh, Daily News' Frank Isola from both the print point of view and his TV fame, uh, Daily News Live. As we move to a crucial game three in Chicago, all the talk with respect to the Bulls of the walking wounded has been Derrick Rose, play or not play. Number one, what do you hear? Number two, what do you think? You know, I had asked Tom Thibodeau about it, and, you know, he says they talk about it every day, but he's at the point where he says he does not want, you know, they've waited so long for Derrick Rose to come back. He doesn't want him coming back unless he is 100% sure that he's ready to play. The problem with Derrick Rose is I think he feels that once he comes back, he wants to be at an MVP level. That's not never going to happen. It's going to take, you know, a couple of months. Look at Iman Shumpert. He came back on January 17th in London, of all places, he w- when the Knicks played the Pistons. And it's taken a while for him to get back. And then you saw that great dunk that he had in game two against the Pacers, the way that he's defending against Boston. He's slowly getting back to that level, but it takes time. If Derrick Rose doesn't play until, say, the summer league in Las Vegas, he's going to have trouble physically those first, you know, few games and then into the preseason. He has to get over that hurdle at some point. Why not? He should have, to me, he should have done it about a month ago. And how do the players on the team feel about him coming back? You know what? It's interesting. You talk to most NBA players, you talk to the guys on the Knicks, and they'll tell you, oh, he shouldn't come back. The players, I think the players look at it, al- always look at it as a career, and you have to do what's best for and your they, career. And they always close ranks. Correct? Absolutely, and I don't think they're thinking at it like, the, well, here's my thing. This but might do be the, the players, Bulls. Do the players on the Bulls think that, they, that him coming back and sort of forcing his will on the team is a better advantage to them, or are they better off without him? Sort of like because he's not coming back to play a subservient role. role. Well, he's coming that, back as what he considers to be the MVP. And of if the he team. comes back, how many minutes is he going to play? You have him playing 10, uh, 15, 20. I don't know if he can be effective. Well, right now, my, my next question is to you 
don't you think it's a plus just having even a semi-effective rose from a mental standpoint for the team and from because they are the walking wounded I mean they they need another warm body who can play yeah no, so I, I my, my point is if, if you can get out there and give your team 10 minutes because they are so depleted you got to go give your team 10 minutes and let the muscle memory come back on All the right. court I'll give you two stories uh, a few years ago the Orlando Magic made it to the finals with Skip to Malou Ray Peralson as their point guard not exactly an elite player Jameer Nelson had missed a lot of time. Jameer Nelson was then ready to come back. I think it was like for game two of the finals. He was not good. He ended up hurting the team. Now, you're talking about give you a couple of minutes. Uh, this was in the early 90s. Pat Riley walks in the locker room. One of the players on the team is in his, is in his suit, not dressed. Great story. And he had been, his knee was bothering him. And Pat Riley said, it can, if I need you to give me two minutes tonight, three minutes, could you do that? And the player said, I probably could. And then he said, well, why the heck don't you have your uniform on? Mm -hmm. So I think that was the point. It's like, you know, it's you know, all hands on deck type of thing. And I agree with who you. Who was the player? Um, it's probably who you might think it was. It was a good Nick player, not a great Hardaway? Team. Hardaway. A Penny Hardaway. I don't know. No, no, what am I thinking, Penny Hardaway? You, you got the wrong team. No, you're the, uh, Penny, Nick. Um, Penny wasn't there. He was still the Magic. In any event, to your yeah. point. Who was he? I don't want to say it. Oh, jeez. Obviously, he didn't want to say it. And to your <laughs> point, um, he's about 100 days over the average of return for an ACL. Yeah. So it's up here, obviously, and it's career and everything else. But he's a guy who dom he's going to come back. He's going to want to dominate the ball. I don't think it's a good thing for the Bulls. And also, it, it, here's the funny thing, though, about these injuries. These players now, like Derrick Rose, when the, uh, when the Bulls came to the Garden in January, he's out on the court working out for the game, like putting on a That's whole show. That's what's confusing. I mean, it, you're talking February, March, You've April, seen clips of four him months doing ago. And, and they say he is playing very hard and effective and exploding in practice. Yep. That's right. And that's why so you think it's up here. My, right? my simple point is you, you got to go at some point. I know, Your absolutely. team needs you now more than ever. And, and again, even if it's just right now for minutes yeah. to give guys rest, Okay, you got to go. At least try. And I think the more this, you know, this story is gaining momentum, I think, you know, in the city of Chicago is a great sports center. They're not that critical of their players, obviously, there. So I think it's obviously been a story, but it's not like it would have been a story here in New York. They're we not been critical of their Jordans and Roses. Absolutely. We would have been hammering this, this story all the time. I think now that it's become a much bigger national story, I think it's gaining momentum. I would not be shocked if he doesn't come back for games three and now, four at home. Last night, Marvin... Steve Kerr were intimating that that was going to be the case. Do, do you think he's coming back? Yeah, well, the, I'm guessing that he will because I think now I think he's going to feel some pressure to get back, especially with guys being hurt. Here's the thing, too. We, you know, uh, Kirk Heinrich hasn't played now for, a, what is it, four or five games. Dang has been in the hospital. He had a spinal tap. Right. When they come back, they're not going to be effective either. So I think that the Bulls, you know, I think the fans always have this idea of oh, getting guys back. Sometimes that doesn't necessarily work. Sometimes less is more in sports. So let's Maybe that's the, why for the up here, it could just be one of you guys. Let, <laughs> let, let, let's, let's, <laughs> let's go West, young man. Both series at 1-1. Both series could be 2-0, yep. okay, with the favored yeah. home court advantage team each pulling a game out of the fire in game one. Uh, your thoughts on the Thunder without Westbrook. Can they even win this series, let alone make it to oh, the I think finals? they can win the series, but they can't win the uh, – NBA Finals. Can they, can they make it to the Finals without Westbrook? You know what? I think they probably still could because Kevin Durant is that good, but I can't see them winning three series and winning a championship because last year they had Harden, James Harden on the team. He was traded essentially for Kevin Martin, and now you're replacing Westbrook with Reggie Jackson. If this was baseball, that'd be a great thing, but it's basketball, and Reggie Jackson is too young at this point in his career to really get you over the hump that much. But, you know, a lot of this, you know, the Westbrook thing ties into Derrick Rose because here you are, the Oklahoma City figured we made the finals last year. The natural step will be to get back, and this year we'll win it. But things change. It takes an injury, and now who knows if they'll ever get back to that level. And that's why for the Bulls, this could be their best chance and how about to ever get to a finals. That's the way it works in sports. And I think for Oklahoma City, it's a tough break for them because I think, it, first of all, unbelievable fans there. I've been there. It's Great environment. There's nothing to do during the day. I will grant you that. But in terms of going to an arena, the fans are crazy. And it's a, it's a one-horse town. That's it. And yeah. I, th I think Westbrook, even though, you know, as a lifelong Laker fan, I don't like the, the scowl and, and, you know, the, the pro ch jumping around after he dunks while the ball's in play. Yeah. He plays he, 180 he, miles he, an hour. Oh, he, he is an iron and, man, 110%. Balls yeah. to the wall all and, the time. And that's the, thing you, that's the thing you find out from covering professional sports is you'd be surprised how many guys don't like their job. 
you know, they, they, they like the perks that come with it, obviously the money, but they don't, after a while, they lose the love of the sport. They, now you have a guy like Westbrook, never missed a game in college. What was he in UCLA for two years, right. I think it was? Right. Never missed then, a game in high then school. He, then he ne in high school, never missed a game in the NBA. It's, it's, it's he incredible. Plays with, he plays with great passion. The guy loves to play. How, how unique is that? Let's shift over to the, uh, for me, one of the most fun guys to watch in the NBA in years, Steph Curry and his Golden State Warriors, who now have it at one apiece going back to the East Bay with uh, San Antonio, Frank. First of all, do you agree with me? Is he one of the most fun players to watch? In, yeah, in he did. Just his style. He definitely is. And can Golden State – Can I think Golden State now, without David Lee, uh, who is a walking double-double, you can argue how much impact he has on a team. But uh, I think they can win the West. I, I think they get too. Isn't it funny too when you watch Steph Curry? You see him; he's all you know. He's basically skin and bones. And when you see him with Mark Jackson, it does kind of remind you of Reggie Miller a little bit. A little bit. You know, I, I know he's a little different. He's he's more of a point guard, Steph Curry. But he does remind you of Reggie. That same body. He's got kind of that annoying look to him. You like him, yep. but you can tell that he drives the his opponents crazy. I think he probably drives Mark Jackson crazy. But they seem to have a great relationship. Have well, you better because I mean, that yeah. guy's good. Yeah, and, and I. You know, I, I talk a lot. I say a lot of things that are right. I say probably more things that are wrong. I never thought in a million years he was going to be this good. I, know. I, I never thought. Because you didn't, you didn't think he was going to be good enough to play point guard. You looked at him and said he's too small. But Jeez, I thought he was a two, and even then I thought he would struggle to get a shot up three. as a two. Yeah. But as a two, yeah. I never thought he had a handle like this and, and beat point guards off the dribble. And, why didn't the the and, the, and remember, for all the Knicks fans out there, the Knicks wanted him. But when they got to, they, they had to pick after yeah. Golden State. Why did the Knicks try to do everything move, they could? That's what I told them. To move get Steph Curry. If you liked him, that, a, their instincts were right. He was going to be fun to watch. And you know what game stood out for me, Frank, with him? The Kansas game in the NCAAs. Yeah. He was going against big-time athletes. He was handling the ball 90% of the time that game. And I said, this guy's going to be a good NBA yeah. and player. You know, great? No, but yeah. he's going to be a great. He's got a chance to be great. And his father, obviously, Del Curry, played in the NBA, one of the best great shooters shooter. of all one time. One of the great strokers His of mother all time. was a volleyball player. Now, Sonia, his brother might have trouble. Head gorgeous, by the way. Yes, yeah, she she's is. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Her brother, she's his beautiful. brother might have trouble getting his shot off in the NBA. Yeah. But, but, but Steph had the handle. And putting the ball in his hands. If you watch these games, too, if you don't jump out, if, when the. the they try to defend him by jumping at him. He blows right past him. Exactly. Makes, and how about the shots that he makes? How many times last he night? He makes a one-legged three How many times night. last night did he just beat them off the dribble That's to the basket? One-legged one threes. And, and very quickly, one. unfortunately, we have to wrap up because we could spend another two hours with Frank. Uh, you've seen him forever. Did you think Mark Jackson would be this good a coach? You know who thought Mark Jackson was going to be a great coach? Mark Jackson. And that's the thing about Mark, who I've known for a long time. And I remember talking to him for, a, you know, before he got this job. Mark didn't want to be an assistant. He said, I'm going to be, I don't want to go that route. I'm going to be a head coach. And the reason Mark Jackson lasted so long in the league is a guy that couldn't jump, couldn't run, is because he had the confidence. Swagger. Yeah. And Mark's, Mark's, the a, swagger. Plus he was Mark's a, coach a cocky on the floor guy. For he couldn't shoot, five years. No. yet he still he made a, big shots. He was yeah. a coach on the floor for the last five yeah. years of his career anyway. Unfortunately, okay, the three wise men have got to wrap this program up. We can't thank Frank Isola enough for joining us. And Even more his, fun than brings, my friend Seth. Well, this, well, this, oh, bring well, some NBA well, wisdom this, to the table. Will this be on the best of at the end of the year? This is the best of. Okay, the entire This is the best of. NBA. Boy, was I even here today? <laughs> I, was like the, I was the invisible wise man today. Uh, this is, he, he brought up <laughs> baseball. Back, mentioned Reggie Jackson. What do you back want? Back to baseball. Back, back to the Yankees. Oh, my God. Renato, D'Addario, Goldstein, <laughs> and the fourth horseman, Frank Iasso. Thanks, Frank. Until next time, we are the three wise men. We'll see you again.